I ditched the corporate grind to pursue my passions for fishing and travel. Now I serve as a guest guide at Los Buzos Resort, where I help kayak anglers figure out one of the most epic fisheries on the planet. You're watching Field Trips with Robert that Field. Is a fish, bro! Welcome back to Los Buzos. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, baby. The quarantine has lifted, the country has opened back up. If you watched my last kind of little bundle of Panama videos, those were old. Those were filmed back in January. Panama has been shut down to tourism until just this month, October. I'm back the second day the country is open. And we're gonna do some fishing, we're excited. We got clients showing up tomorrow. So first things first, we got all the kayaks ready, all the gear is ready. We're ready for them to come, except we want to feed these guys some yellowfin tuna, sashimi, as soon as they get here. So we're gonna do a little pre-fishing mission, head out in the panga with Pio. You guys know Pio, we got Adam, Derek, one of the new guides, Dakota. The tuna should be in. We're about to launch the panga, run over there, do a little uh, Panamanian grocery shop, see how it goes. We got more gear than when we got clients. The truck was getting stuck. We were trying to tow the panga down the water. We got a little Panamanian ingenuity here. We're going to push it. We're going to roll it. This boat weighs like 5,000 pounds. Uh, yeah? Yellow fin. Yellow fin. Yeah. Dude, nice. 
Grocery shopping mission is coming together. You got this over right there, so you can't reel them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Nice. Woo! Look at that. Yellow bro. fin on the boat, baby. Two oh. yellow fin in a Sierra. I'll, yeah, that, that's a yeah. big one. Getting groceries right there. And, and I guarantee you, it was a tuna you had on. It had to be. It had to be. So we turn this guy off. Where's my club? I got it. There you go. That's a good Sierra there. Yeah, that's one of my better ones. That one I got on the popper when Natty was here is my biggest ever, but that one's, I mean, it's up there. Okay, we're here tonight. Blood him out. You got a knife. All right, we're bleeding these fish out. Keep that meat nice and fresh. Clients are gonna be eating good right when they show up. Just a few drops of blood in the boat. Here you go. Yep. got a cold cooler with a lot of ice. That's new. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big Sierra right there. Talking about. Yeah, yeah. Nice. 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 Just got to the spot. We've been seeing bait everywhere, and sure enough, bing, 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 four rods went off. Yeah. yeah. One of them shook the hook, but that's two yellowfin and a nice Sierra mackerel on the boat. Do it again. Grocery shop. It's coming together. Cool. We're going to clean out the blood off the boat, make another pass through that area. There's something holding them there. Those palomettos, man, you said. And then there it was, right away, yeah, dribbled up. <laughs> Two minutes after yeah. we saw him, like. For whatever reason, there's a million bonitas around, but once you find the, the palmettos, that's where the fish are. That's so weird. I wonder if the tuna eat those jellyfish too. Probably. I bet yeah. they do. Tuna will eat small baits. I'm always so surprised they eat these big ass baits. All right, dropping the lines back. We're running four lines, four different lures, and apparently they don't care what, what it is. All four got hit. All very different. Yeah, all very different lures. All four went off within 10 seconds of each other. That was fun there. That was exciting. All right, we're coming back up on this bait now. Let's see if we can't do it again. Nice. You can probably work it. Work yeah. It. Where am I? Am I inside you're of you? Me, you're over me. You're good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one on. Only one? What is this? <laughs> that one did get hit. This one did? Yeah. Mackerel. Mackerel, huh? Nice. nice one. Another good one. Yeah? Uh, okay. You got it? Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Dude, that's a great one. That's bigger than mine. Oh man. That's a stud, that's a dude. Stud mac. <laughs> that's a great mackerel, man. He likes that wrap. That could be a potential length vector right there. Another fish on. Just ran through a huge school of bait and hound fish that were jumping out of the water going crazy. And it looks like mackerel. Nice mackerel. Looks like another good one, man. Big mackerel out here today. Woo there he is. Now, yeah. he's now he knows he's on it. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Man, giant jumbo mackerel out here today. What the love? Hit, numb it. Yep, yep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, he ain't done. Dude. <laughs> yeah! Look at these guys. Are you, I cannot believe all these mackerel are this big. 
Like each one of these are like the biggest mackerel I've seen out here. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, dude. We own them now, boys. Sick. Hey, boys, he thick. Shouty thick. Oh man, look at all these palomitas. So this is a bait fish here. They eat jellyfish. They're called palomitas. So you can't catch them, but for some reason, we catch fish around them. I don't know if the predators eat them or not, but today, about every time we've run through this school, these palometas, we hooked up. These are Sierra mackerel, so they look like Spanish mackerel we get in the States. They are not that. These things are delicious. You can sashimi them, eat them raw. That's gonna be real good. We needed lunch for fish wraps for the clients, and we needed tuna for sashimi. Check and check. Like, we're done, really. We're not done. Yeah, we Welcome could, to uh, Panama, baby! Yeah, man, it's good to be back, dude. So good to be back. Do some jigging, boys. Let's do some jigging. Let's go town. Sin tu cadera, no puedo cantar. Sin tu cadera, no puedo gozar. Sin tu cadera, sin movimiento, mi ritmo y música va a parar. Sin tu cadera, mi melodía no vale nada. Oh, because Derek. Yeah. On the popper. On the popper. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Mullet snapper. Mullet snapper. Mullet snapper, man. Nice. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. On the top water, dude. Jack Norris. <laughs> on the popper, man. That is awesome. Out here in what? What are we in, like 100 feet? <laughs> yeah. I, what are, how, what's what's the fish? 97 feet of water. The snapper just hit the popper up on top. The Chug Norris. We love this popper. Out here, it's pretty much bigger the better. Look at that, man. Nice work. Yeah. That's a big ass popper there. Yes, sir. Look at that. Mullet snapper from Derek Cortez. Yeah. Resident guide here, Los Buzos. Woo, Beautiful fish, man. That'll eat. That'll eat. Yeah. Use it for bait. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bonita? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not very big. Okay, another one. Fish on the popper. Oh, tuna. Tuna? A small one. Get the bat. Got it. Hold up, Bob. Yo, fan tuna. We were hoping to get at least one more. There we go on the popper. Getting all the blood out of there. The needle tastes way better. Yeah. A little bit of blood in the boat. Poquito sangre, amigo. Poquito. Y mi propina? Hell yeah, those are delicious, man. Rainbow runner on the stick bait. Bring it, bring, bring it to the front slow. Nice, dude. That's sashimi right there. Oh, yeah. Those things are delicious sashimi. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that's a good one too, man. All right, successful grocery run. Came out here for the last three hours of the day. I think we got three tuna, three jumbo Sierra mackerel, and this bonus mullet snapper. That was quick and efficient. Grocery shop. Now we gotta get back and clean all these things up. <laughs> Yee!
Yeah, just, just what the doctor ordered. I know. When we got, oh, when I got the first one, I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah and I was all impressed, and it might end up being the smallest, this one. Yeah, I, I was worried when y'all said y'all had a, a decent micro on it, because a lot of times it's like, it's big, but it's not enough to... Yeah. All right, so the clients are gonna be here about four hours. We've been just working. I'm drenched in sweat, getting everything ready, doing some last minute construction items and uh, all kinds of projects, but we're getting pretty much done. But now Morris is gonna prep these Sierra mackerel that we caught last night for the smoker. We're gonna use this to make fish dip. We're gonna use this to make some wraps for lunch. So he's about to show us how he preps these. We're gonna put them in the smoker and get that going so it's ready for the clients. Here. This is sweet, this little smoking yeah. room, man. You don't get to, you don't get to film the secret sauce. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Wait till we get a couple boxes of wine in here for it. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick around and get the premium. If I run out of space, it's gonna be backbone space. So you leave the skin on yeah. so it stays like intact or that's like oily? Well, or I'll peel the meat off, but it, it, it protects the bottom one. Oh yeah, it's inside down. Damn, three macro bits. Those are some good ones. That's a lot of meat. This is a secret marinade, huh? Yep, secret sauce. I'm gonna slobber this all over here. Especially a lot of butter and a little bit of the secret stuff. A lot of butter and a little secrets. It might have derived from the Florida cracker mullet smoking recipe. Mullet smoking recipe. We got some chicharrones, which is basically the fat and the skin from a pig. And Vianney does these right. It's gonna come out just melt in your mouth, crispy and uh, so good. Open her up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of these chicharrones, put them on the bottom, lock some of the flame. The rest of a couple of these, some of these chicharrones. Oh yeah. Barbecue temp. <laughs> Ready for the fish. Oh, yeah. Mike, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Oh, you all good? Okay. Hey, Rob. Hi. You're, you're, you're fishing with... Um, Field trips are right? That's it. Oh my god, I watch all your videos. Bro. Oh, that's awesome, man. What's your name? Mike. Mike, good to meet you, man. Joe Cochran, how you doing, buddy? How are you? Long time no see, man. Yeah. Been doing well. Good. Good to have you back. Everybody What's up, man? Eric? Yep. Rob. Nice to meet you. Rob. Yeah. Rob. Miles. 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 Just at our little safety orientation meeting, kind of going through the kayaks, going through the process, what's gonna be going down this week. Now they're over at Roosterfish Bar and Grill, our little bar and grill right across the street, enjoying some sashimi, some beers. We got free unlimited beer here. We're gonna be rigging up any tackles. Some of these guys brought their own rods and reels. A lot of them just rented stuff from us, but we'll be rigging that stuff up. Probably an early night, getting ready to go fishing in the morning. It's gonna be a good time. I'm excited. Sierra Michael just came on the smoker. The clients showed up. They've already eaten. They're over there bringing up tackle. But now Morris Palmer, the owner of Los Buzos, is going to show us how he makes the Los Buzos tuna salad with the tuna that we got, and also my personal favorite, the Los Buzos fish dip with the Sierra Michael. They're gonna be delicious. I think this is gonna be relatively straightforward. He's about to walk us through. So the scraps we're not using will go to the pigs. Feed the pigs. Which may eventually become a Boston butt to make the pulled pork sandwiches for next year's group. <laughs> this is tuna chunked up. This is the mackerel shredded up. God, that's a lot. And I'm going to use the same sauce, but the tuna I'm going to stir it in and add pickles, and it'll be more like a salad. This I'm going to end up needing. You got to use your hands for both of these. Time to get messy, huh? The choice of that. So what you want to do here? This is real important. The first step is you do this over and over 
because it's way easier to get a bone out mm, while well, it's like this. Once you get everything mixed, then you're throwing out onions and cilantro and mm, all these choking on them. Next step, add the dry ingredients. Some dry ingredients first. That's important. Conveniently cut up for me. And this is all by eye. But the, the best recipes are. The tuna is a little more salady, so I have a little more. Bigger ratio of stuff. Yeah. Line throw, already conveniently cut up for me. Same the tuna. I love this stuff. I probably use it more than most people like. Oh, it smells so good. It adds good freshness, gives it that green. Okay, going with a bunch of salad there. So. That's so much fish, but I can't believe that. Um, now what I'm gonna do with both of them is just mix the dry ingredients together. You see a much bigger bowl than you're gonna make. This though, one of the things about this that makes it tough to make is you'll see when I get done, it'll be down to like half. It's uh, very dense. It condenses good. Yeah. Dip, yeah. Whereas with the tuna, stir it together. So you're a little more delicate with tuna because you're not trying to shred it. Yeah. You're trying to keep it. Now, in the end, I'll get it close, but I like it. I like it to be a little more like a salad. Yeah. But we use them in the wrap, so I don't want it to be real chunky. The difference is I'll get them almost the same at this stage, but then I'm going to need that into like a ball of dough. This I want. All right. So important step number three. Big trick here is if you dump spices and powders and liquid smoke there, it's gonna get all in that wad. You put it all in the mayonnaise. Oh, okay. So you mix your wet ingredients separate. Exactly, then I need the mayonnaise. Now I'm totally guessing on the liquid smoke because I've never made a batch this big, but I'm only one or two, so I'm gonna go with about four capfuls of liquid smoke. And I use any of several different season oils, but I like this Goya, the green Goya the best because it's not too salty. That in there. Now blur your camera. Oh, right, right, right. Blur secret ingredient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The secret ingredient comes personally packaged for me by a well-known <laughs> American company. Yeah. So it's not letting us know the secret ingredient, but you can get it pretty close. And at this point, if you want to make it spicy, you would add hot sauce. That's what's great about it. Like, you can really make it your own, you know, depending on what you like. You can even throw like little diced jalapenos in this bit. Yeah. This, I do sweet pickles, dill pickles. You can do whichever one you want. I like to add the pickles in the tuna salad. What kind of those? This, this is sweet? sweet relish, yeah. I get about a gallon because I use them in the tartar sauce. We eat a lot of mm. tartar sauce. I like that little sweetness. It'll be good. And what I'll do is put this on here. At this point, I still do it like I do the other. You just can't, you beat it to death if you do it with a spoon. So it's all hands from here. This you're afraid one, to get messed. This one, I'm just kind of lightly doing it around. You, with your hands, you can do it without totally tearing it apart, or you can crush it like you want to there. And this way, all those spices are all over the salad. So that smells good. Los Buso's tuna salad recipe. Go that spoon right there and get you a bite. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm not good for much, but I'm the official taste tester here. Try this tuna salad out. And this is not tuna salad out of a can, it's tuna salad of the tuna was swimming yesterday afternoon. Oh, it's delicious. Wow. That's perfect. Now, mm. I like that with the sweet, the sweet relish. Yeah. That's good. When you do it like I do this and blend it, it goes. You goes literally do this like bread dough. Kneading it. Huh? Like you're kneading bread dough. So it'll get on in there in good ways. And you can make it drier or wetter, but I like this pretty dry. You can always add more mayonnaise. Right, right. This, what's good about this, this is good. I'll make this, we'll be eating it. Well, if it ain't gone, we'll be eating it next week after the group's gone. Because it um, it really gets better as it goes along. Yeah, the flavors kind of meld. And you could almost like make it into a crab cake and like throw yeah. it on the grill. Best way is to grease is on a cracker with hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. My favorite way to serve it is put it on a plate and shape it in the shape of a fish. You use <laughs> there you celery go. and a black olive for an eyeball. <laughs> Basically, that's the finished product. Nice. You serve it a little ball like that. Ball it up. Cracker with hot sauce. Huh? Take you a pinch of that. Oops, see there, you missed one. Damn. It is prone to have a bone every now and then. Grab the best. It's a, Grab take a piece. You a pinch. Shake it out. Oh, man. Oh. So good. Nice 
mild fish and mackerel. Nothing makes it better than shared mackerel. The second best is probably a smoked king. Mm -hmm. That's what they make it out of Florida. Yep. And then the third is maybe an amberjack. It's hardest to make out of tuna. Tuna dries out too much. Oh. God, that's good. Nothing, nothing comes close to this. The serum, this is the best tasting mackerel in the world that I've tried. This stuff's so good. There you go. God, that's good, man. That will be in sandwiches I love, all week long. I love the onions. You get like a little crunch, like a subtle crunch. Or the cilantro mix. You'll see that at a sandwich near you soon. <laughs> that's going to be lunch. And there you have it, folks. The Los Buzos secret tuna salad and fish dip recipe. These are going to be going in wraps, but our lunch is going to be taken out of the water. We'll be eating it for half a time, and we'll be eating it all week and beyond, probably, if that's a third of the day. Yeah, man. Cheers. All right, guys. Well, super fun day. Doing a little grocery shopping here in the front yard. Those Sierra mackerel are going to be so good. We got enough tuna to feed the clients. The first group here is some sashimi. It's going great. Now everyone's just kind of getting rods rigged up, getting tackle organized, picking out their kayaks, just getting everything ready. And we're just hanging out, laughing, swapping fish lies, you know, stories. And uh, seems like a great crew. They've all got killer attitudes. I'm already enjoying their company. It's going to be a good time. I think we're going to get in some fish this week. We always do. If you want to come out here and do this yourself, you want to be a client, a guest, and come out here and fish with us, with Adam, Derek, Dakota, the whole crew here at Los Buzos, you can do it. LosBuzos.com is all the information you need to plan a trip. Everything from the pricing to when you want to come to all kinds of stuff, logistics, everything you need to know. LosBuzos.com. If you want to come on one of my weeks, just request that. Say so when, you sign, when you're signing up. Robert Field, the Field Trips Weeks, they'll be happy to fill you in one of my weeks. I hope to see you out here. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. But I'm going to get rested up. We're going to finish rigging up tackle here, and then uh, I'm going to go to bed early. It's going to be an early start, and this place is a lot of physical work. But boys, it's going to be worth it. I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks so much for being here. Adios. Ciao. Hasta luego. Hey, I need somebody over here. Can you get it? Yep. All right, double header. Oh man, another one. Triple one. Oh, no way. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my God. <laughs>